Studyfinds.org, global frustration, online sentiments about COVID-19 have turned from fear to anger. Well, at least that's progress, right? For many people stuck in lockdown, social media is their best outlet for staying in contact with the world as the coronavirus pandemic continues to spread. Fear of the illness remains high. Unfortunately, a new study finds that fear is turning into anger as the global community anxiously awaits for a cure. Well, is that unfortunate? I think that's I think that's fortunate. I mean, it's progress. Uh, if someone's trying to scare you, like, I mean, if, if, if a mugger, and I, I hate to use this libertarian cliche, but it's very appropriate here, right? If a mugger comes and sticks a gun in your face and says, give me your wallet, your first response is, oh, I'm afraid, fear, and you're paralyzed with fear. Yeah, I can't take my wallet, take my money, take whatever you want, right? That's bad, right? Because your, your fear is fear is a paralyzing emotional response. At least Anger. Now, I'm not saying anger is good. It's still just an emotion, right? But it's better than fear in the sense that it could prompt you to action, right? If you're just afraid of your mug or you're, ah, you're totally paralyzed and helpless. If you're angry, you know, you're not going to go, screw you. How dare you try to mug me? Because that might get you shot in the face, right? But at least it would prompt you to go, hmm, maybe I'm not just going to give up my wallet so easily maybe i'm you know at least i'm going to stop and think maybe my my anger is going to check me from being submissive so the fact that people are getting angry instead of afraid like, that's a good thing now are people angry at the virus gosh darn that virus that it it killed my ma and raped my pa you know like no that's not what are they angry about they're angry about the situation created by government governments all over the world using this virus as the excuse. Researchers at Nanyang Technological University are studying the shift in emotions being expressed on Twitter during the pandemic. Their analysis of more than 20 million tweets finds nearly 60% of online reaction expressed fear and uncertainty about the virus in January amid the start of the pandemic. So yeah, since we didn't know what was going on, yeah, hey, there's a new threat. The media is telling us we should be afraid. Of course, there's going to be more fear. Since then, fearful tweets continue to drop while messages expressing anger are on the rise. The study in JMIR Public Health and Surveillance adds angry coronavirus posts made up nearly 30% of Twitter reaction on March 12th. That is the same day the World Health Organization officially declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. So... The end. So where's this going? You got a, a, a nice graphic here that charts anger, fear, sadness, and joy. I mean, like, what a cool way that we can look at information now. Now, what's interesting? So this is going back from January to April. Joy, the yellow line there, is actually going up significantly from like fifteen percent to thirty. People are more joyful. That's crazy. But now the big story here, the purple line, the fear goes from 55% to under 30%. That's great news, right? People don't fall for lies indefinitely. We have the ability to admit that we were wrong, to admit that we have been fooled, and to change our position as a result. But now what this story is trying to make, uh, make, make more of a point of is that anger is up. Not that joy is up, but that anger is up. And actually, according to this chart, Joy is up more than anger. Makes you wonder about the slant they're trying to put on this. The NTU team says this shift reflects growing frustration with national quarantines as people express anger over their isolation and social seclusion. Governments must do a better job of communicating with the public to keep these frustrations from boiling over. Now, do you, do you see the pro-government bias just in that statement? Because, you know, what I, what would I say? Governments must do a better job of communicating with the public to keep these frustrations from boiling over. Yeah, the mugger here has to do a much better job of explaining to you why he's mugging you so that you're not, hey, hey, don't be angry with me from stealing from you. Um, I, I was, I'm just, I'm poor. I lost my job. Because, well, it might have been because of the coronavirus shutdown. I lost my job. My family's poor. If I don't steal from you, I'm not going to be able to feed, feed my kids. 
So what would the government, hey, uh, do a better job of, hey, guys, you know what? We, you have to stay locked down because if you don't stay locked down, we can't take over the economy on behalf of our sponsors and rip you off so that bankers have more control over society as they buy stocks through the Federal Reserve, as, as we see that the commercial real estate shutdowns or, you know, or, or the, the crisis in commercial real estate from shutting down businesses. We have to be able to shut down businesses, so please don't get frustrated. Now, if the government started actually explaining what was going on here, we'd be more angry. Why are people getting more angry? Because they are understanding this, because they know what government is all about. As the uh, professor, Lewin, says in the university release about this study, the rapid evolution of global COVID-19 sentiments within a short period of time points to a need to address increasingly volatile emotions through strategic communication by governments and health authorities, as well as responsible behavior by netizens before they give rise to unintended outcomes. This is like, if you're getting raped, this is the guy who comes in and instead of saying, hey, can we stop this rape in progress? Can we, can we violently intervene and stop the rapist from raping you? Saying, hey, you know, we really need the rapist to do a better job of controlling you. We need the rapist to make sure that you don't have such an emotional response to getting raped. Lewin suggests not addressing the public's anger can lead to growing mistrust of how officials are handling the emergency. Wait a second. No, 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 no. Um, how officials are handling the emergency, which is not really an emergency, how they're making an emergency out of a non-emergency to have emergency powers that they wouldn't have otherwise is what is fueling the public anger at this point. And if you think I'm just going by my own assumptions or responses to the shutdowns here, no, absolutely not. I'm reading the news. Like, look at the story we brought you just a few days ago in Utah, where they had a mask mandate and said, we're going to shut down schools. Parents showed up angry without masks. People protesting are angry people protesting the shutdowns and the lockdowns and we went to the reopen arizona protest here even months ago didn't seem to have much of an effect in the wave of hysteria and statistics but what no people are angry because of the shutdowns because of the lockdowns so the story concludes signs of joy a ray of hope Although researchers say over a fifth of tweets about COVID-19 are now angry ones, they note that feelings of joy and gratitude are also rising. The analysis reveals tweets expressing joy have nearly equaled fearful tweets as of May. These social media users are talking about national pride and community spirit. They use words like good news and feel good as more people recover from the illness. In Singapore, the study finds many of these comments revolve around resilience to COVID-19 and celebrating heroic or kind acts. Well, what are the uh, heroic and kind acts? I think it's the kinds of people who are standing up to government tyranny right now, whether it's protesting the shutdowns, the mask mandates, or just going out and protesting with BLM even, standing up to federal agents in Portland and throughout the country now enforcing martial law. Maybe anger and joy go hand in hand because I am quite happy to see that people are getting over their fear and directing their anger properly, not to the virus, but to the government that has used it as an excuse to cause so much hardship.